Come up from the fields, father, the day is done. The first part is Walt Whitman, and the second half is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Could you have answered that question? Phyllis did in our last game. Stay with us now and test your recall with the best from Barnard and the University of Southern California here on the General Electric College Bowl. The College Bowl, the intercollegiate battle of brains, brought to you each week by the General Electric Company. Live and direct from colleges and universities throughout America. General Electric, the company that makes life easier and happier with the world's finest portable home appliances, vacuum cleaners, clocks, radios, and phonographs. Today, we're on campus at Barnard College in New York City, New York. Two weeks ago in South Bend, Indiana, the girls from Barnard flexed their intellectual muscles with an impressive win over the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. This afternoon, Barnard meets a strong far western team from the University of Southern California of Los Angeles. USC has over 17,000 students. Its athletes are called Trojans, and the campus is referred to as Troy. Southern Cal's motto is the ancient Trojan motto, the palm to him who merits it. And on this appropriate Easter note, let's hop along and meet that man with the questions, Alan Ludden. Hi, everybody. It's very good to have you with us on this Easter Sunday in New York. We hope it's been a very happy day for you and that you'll stay with us now for this 10th game in the General Electric College Bowl. Let's beat our teams now and get the game started. Now, here they are, the challengers all dressed up in their Easter finery from University of Southern California. William Moore from San Pedro, California. Stan Argon, Los Angeles. Rivko Avruz in Chahunga, California. Harry Waterman, Los Angeles. The Varsity Scholars from Barnard. Ellen Willis, Bayside, New York. Phyllis Hurwitz, Binghamton, New York. Cherry White, Baldwin, New York. Susan Rooney, Transvaal, South Africa. And that's Barnard. That's Barnard. Now, who's next to you? May I explain the rules to you? I have two kinds of questions. Toss-up questions worth ten points. Bonus questions worth a stated number of points. Now, if a team signals first that it knows the answer to a toss-up question and answers that question correctly, it gets a chance at a bonus question. If the team gives the wrong answer to a toss-up question, the other team is given a chance to answer it. Remember, teams, you may interrupt me while I'm asking a toss-up question, but if you do and your answer is wrong, I penalize your team five points and repeat the entire question, giving the other team a free crack at it. One more point. On a toss-up, the question must be answered by the person who signals first only, and only one person may speak. The team with the greatest number of points at the end of the game is the winner and returns next week to defend its title here in the College Bowl. Each week, the General Electric Company will award to the school of the winning team a $1,500 scholarship grant and to the school of the runner-up team a $500 scholarship grant. Now, we'll be ready to start the first half of our, half of our game right after this word from General Electric. Can you identify these vacuum cleaner cords? The wind-around stoop-over? The tangled closet hanger? The knotted floor dragger? If one of them is yours, watch closely. Here's a cleaner that eliminates messy tangled cords forever. It's the new General Electric Cord Reel Cleaner. A touch of the foot pedal, and the cord disappears, saving you the headache of having to store it. And see how easy it maneuvers. A new steer-easy wheel lets it follow you at the slightest pull without bumping into furniture or tipping lamps. GE's powerful double-action cleaning unit cleans quickly and thoroughly, too. See, it uses two brushes. The rear brush cleans on the forward stroke. The front brush cleans on the backward stroke. Cuts cleaning strokes in half. Another step-saving feature is this handy caddy that carries all attachments wherever you go. See the cleaner that stores its own cord. The new General Electric Cord Reel Cleaner. Ask your dealer for a demonstration. That's the opening whistle. You all set? Here we go. I have a 30-point bonus coming up. Here's the toss-up that could get it for you. You ready? For 10 points. What was William Quinn so excited about when he recently said, Sound the siren. Barnard Hurwitz. 
William Quinn, the governor of um, Hawaii, was excited about the fact that Hawaii was voted in by the Congress of the United States to become eligible as the 50th state. That's the answer. <laughs> and get going and that's what he was excited about it and Phyllis you started right out again like you ended up the last time here we go you now have a 30 point bonus here Barn and see if you can earn it for yourself you know a recent newspaper feature story paraphrased a familiar poem with these words once upon a morning cheery as he pondered slightly weary over bacon and eggs and a couple of cups of morning brew suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping rapping at his chimney flue for 30 points Quote the original lines from which this paraphrase yeah, comes. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, as I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping on my chamber door. To some light visitor I muttered, tapping on my chamber door. <laughs> say that you paraphrase you did the, the proper thing you were going right on you could have done the whole poem huh? so, <laughs> all right that's plenty that's 30 points you earned there i have another 30 pointer coming up here's your toss-up you ready for 10 points in what book of the bible would you find this passage and the angel answered and said unto the women fear not ye bartered white matthew matthew that is right for 10 points All right, here's a 30-point bonus, Barn, and work as a team on this. The bonus question, uh, worth 30 points, as I say, for 10 points. What fictional lagomorph lost a pair of white kid gloves? The, the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. 10 points. For 10 points, what is the common name of the mammal, Silvillagus foridanus, mentioned in a popular song by Nelson and Rollins? Silvillagus floridanus. The common name for the mammal. You don't know it? Rabbit. What? The Rabbit. Easter Bunny. No. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Cottontail is what I was thinking. Oh. No points. And I got to sing. All right. Here we go. For ten points. What rabbit was created by a woman named Mary Chase? Oh, Harvey. Harvey. That's right for ten points. Okay. <laughs> I have a 30-point musical bonus. A 30-point musical bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. If you've got a good whip of CHCL3, would you be most apt to make a date with a beauty queen, take a nap, or run to the nearest... Barnard Hurwitz. You would take a nap because that's ether. That's what? Um, it's chloroform, but take a nap is the answer. I was seeking. <laughs> I didn't have to... <laughs> This is our musical bonus today. You ready? You'd probably be able to recognize the dance form indicated by the music of the waltz or the cha-cha-cha. But for ten points apiece, you are now to identify the dance form. I want the dance form represented in each of these classical compositions. First, what is the dance form? Listen. Polonaise. Polonaise. That's right, for ten points. That is the dance form. Now, you are looking for the dance form, remember? What is the dance form implied in this music? That will be forthcoming. <laughs> I trust. No, it's a pavan. Ravel pavan for un bon pavon. You know? All right. Here we go. What is the dance form implied here? <laughs> oh, you hate yourself. What is that dance form? Couldn't you dance to that? <laughs> No takers? That's the polka from Shostakovich's Age of Gold. The polka. All right. I have a 30-point bonus coming up. Don, what's the score now? Barnard, 90. Southern Cal, 0. All right. This is a visual toss-up. It's a visual toss-up to test your powers of association. So watch very carefully. Barnard, 
Leonard White. Of Shoes and Ships and Filling Racks of Cabbages and Kings, it's The Walrus and, and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll. From well, Alice in Wonderland. you're right, and I'm glad you got it, but you know what you dipped me out of? The cabbage? You dipped me out of picking up. Look what I had to cut. <laughs> Now, for ten points, quote the lines of verse in which all of the objects I've just shown you are mentioned, and, of course, the answer is of shoes and chips. Well, I got I the cabbages. I was waiting for the cabbages. You were? Well, that's why I was holding them. All right. Here's your 30-point bonus, Barnard. In history, certain political and military factions have been associated with colors. For ten points apiece, you were to tell us, who were the red rose and the white rose? La Lancaster and York. That's ten points. Who were the black and tan? They were the Irish. Well, were they the Nationals? English. They were the English uh, army no that English that, Irish, the that put Irish in the in Austin. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Irish. I would say as a team, you did very well. There. <laughs> you were all going for the same thing: military irregulars sent by the English to suppress the agitation for the independence, right? In Ireland. All right, ten points. Okay, who were the Blues and Greens? Sounds like a spring color combination. <laughs> well, that's a good color combination. <laughs> Blues but this is not what I mean. Who were they? A, well, a French revolutionary movement. No, that's a good guess. But they were political factions in 6th century Byzantine Empire. <laughs> well, I thought everybody knew that. All right, here we go. I have a 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, who is the only woman who has ever won two Nobel Prizes? Barnard Hurwitz. Marie Curie? Marie Curie is right for 10 points. <laughs> All right, Barnard. Where's the team? It's a 20-point bonus question on nursery rhyme characters who were amateur fishermen. 10 points for each correct answer. Which character tried to catch a whale in his mother's pail? Oh, wow. Simple, Simple Simon. Simon. Simple Simon. Simple Simon, 10 points. Do you know the verse? Simple Simon, Simon went, went a fishing, fishing for to catch a whale. But the oh. only fish that were there were in his mother's tail. Well, that's fair enough. All right. All right. Which one caught fishes in other men's ditches? Come, come, come. Little Tommy Tittlemouse oh. lived in a little house. He caught fishes in other men's ditches. I have a 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss up. And that's the whistle that ends the first half. <laughs> What's the end of the score of the first half? Barnard. The score at the end of the first half. <laughs> Barnard, 140. Southern Cal, zero. We'll take out time to talk to our teams right after this message from General Electric. <laughs> it's new, and it hooks for a crowd. The new General Electric king-size skillet. See? There are enough francs in that skillet for 18 people. It's roomy enough to do a dozen hamburgers, a big five-pound pot roast, a whole chicken, and the skillet's automatic, so you hardly have to watch it, which makes it great for entertaining. You just set the control for the right temperature, in this instance 230 degrees for chicken, and join your guests. The GE control watches the cooking for you, keeps the skillet at just the right heat automatically. There's no smoking, no burning. No cooking in batches either, thanks to the king size. And look, have you ever seen more perfect results? GE's helper handle makes the skillet easy to carry to the table, even when full. Keeps seconds nice and warm, too. And when you want to wash the skillet, just unplug the control and dunk the whole thing in the water, just like an ordinary pan. You'll like this easy-to-read temperature chart on the handle. And here's another handy GE feature. This ring, so you can hang your skillet on the wall for easy storage. Remember, it's new, and it cooks for a crowd. The handy new General Electric King-Size Skillet. You can see it at your GE dealers now. It's our custom here at halftime to find out first each week about the new school in our college school. Let's find out about Southern California. Bill, how many students? Well, we have over 17,000 students, which makes us the largest uh, privately endowed university west of the Mississippi. It's a very cosmopolitan group, isn't it? Yes, we have over 1,000 foreign students from almost every nation in the world. Very good. Stan, how was this school founded? Over 75 years ago, Alan, 
by a Protestant, a Jew, and a Catholic on an interfaith principle, and we have maintained that throughout the years. One of our proudest traditions, by the way. And you should be proud of it. You know, Rip, though, the, one of the things that the girls from Barnard wanted me to ask you particularly was the, uh, to find out exactly the ratio of men to women on your campus. Well, it's just about the same as we have on the team, three to one. Three men to one woman? Yes. Do you like that? Well, I came back for four years. So. <laughs> So evidently you do. Listen, Harvey, I understand how you have quite a fine alumni group, and you're very proud of it in California. Is that true? Yes, we are. Our graduates include about half the doctors, about half the lawyers, about three-fourths of the dentists, and I'm afraid so far none of the quiz masters in the state of California. <laughs> very good. We're delighted to have you here. Now, talking to these girls from uh, Barnard, I want to find out first about uh, your reception after you returned from Notre Dame, the Conquering Heroes. How, what kind of reception did you have, Ellen? Oh, it was really wonderful. A whole lot of the girls came out to meet us, and the Columbia Band came out, and Mrs. McIntosh, president. Uh -huh. What about the Columbia boys? Oh, they were very happy for us, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Phyllis? They want to know what you're going to do when you graduate from college. Well, my plans include going to medical school, and I hope to have a career in medical research. And it'll be an exciting one, I'll bet you. I hope so. What are your plans, Cherry? I, I want to go into college teaching, and of course that involves graduate school first. I'm very excited because I was accepted at Columbia this week, so that's where I'm going. On a fellowship? Yes. Very good. Susan. <laughs> Susan, what are your plans? Uh, well, I hope to go into the field of applied anthropology. Applied anthropology. And that's the whistle that starts our second half. With the score, University of Southern California, zero. Barnard College, 140. We're beginning our second half, and this word of caution, teams. The next time that whistle blows, it's the final whistle. If it blows while I'm in the process of asking a question, I stop, and that's it. If it blows while you're in the process of answering a question, you may complete the answer to that one question only. I have a 20-point bonus in the offing. Here's your toss-up. A verse by James Ball Naylor goes, King David and King Solomon led merry, merry lives with many, many lady friends and many, many wives. Now, for ten points, how many wives? Southern California, Waterman. One thousand. No, I'm sorry, and I've got to penalize you five points. You interrupted me before I said, how many wives did King Solomon have? I'll... Do you want me to repeat the question? Can you take it, Barnard, from that? I should repeat the question. King, Sol King David and King Solomon led merry, many lives, merry, merry lives, with many, many lady friends and many, many wives, for ten points, how many wives did King Solomon have? Can you take it, Barnard? <coughs> Barnard White. Five hundred. No, seven hundred wives. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I have a twenty-point bonus in the offing. Here's your toss-up. For ten points, quote, in Latin, in Latin, at least the first seven words of Caesar's Gallic War. Southern California, Moritz. Uh, omnia Gallia in tres partes de visa est. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you take it, Barnard? <coughs> Barnard Hurwitz. Omnis Gallia S. Divisa in partes tres. No, I have Gallia S. Omnis Divisa in partes tres. That's the way I have it, and that's the way I gotta go by it. All right. I have a twenty-point bonus here. Here's here's another toss-up. For ten points, why is it impossible for a dum dum ever to have hit a dodo? <coughs> Barnard Rennie. Because a dum dum is a bullet. And a dodo is extinct right now, and uh, therefore the dum dum would have come after the dodo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, work as a team now. Work as a team. For 20 points, what Russian novel begins in translation with these words? All happy families resemble one another. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Right. <laughs> A 30-pointer is coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, what legal document concludes with these words? In witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November. Southern Cal Waterman. The Mayflower Compact. Right, for 10 points. <laughs> got a 30-point bonus. A 30-point bonus. 10 points apiece. Tell us, what fictional Englishman sailed on the Patna? Fictional English. Fictional English. Crusoe, perhaps? Gulliver. The Patna. Gulliver. Gulliver? Gulliver? No. Lord Jim in Conrad's novel. What real life... You can still make 20 points on this. What real life Englishman was a passenger on the HMS Beagle? Oh, oh this was a researcher of some sort. Uh, Darwin. That's right. Darwin, the scientist Darwin. What ill-fated ship did Captain Calamai command? 
Oh. Uh, Satanic? No. The Andrea Dorian. The Andrea Dorian. I have a 25-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, spell the Russian premier's last name. <laughs> Barnard Hurwitz. Hurwitz. K-H-R-U-S-H-C-H-E-V. No. Can you take it, Southern California? Southern Cal Arkansas. K-R-U-S-H-E-V. No. K-R-U-S-H-C-H-E-V. All right, I still have a 25-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. Tell us, if you were to take a trip by the shortest possible route from Ketchikan to Kodiak, in what general direction would you travel? Southern Cal Waterman. South. No. Can you take it, Barnard? <laughs> Barnard, white. North. No. West. <laughs> west. <laughs> Ketchikan is on the west coast of Canada. Kodiak is on the western islands of Canada. No, take up a toss-up question. You ready? Listen very carefully. A man bought a dog for $40, sold him for $50. Bought him back for $60 and sold him again for $70. Now, for 10 points, how much money did the man lose or make on the deal? Southern Cal Arkin. Nothing. Sorry, can you take it, Barnard? Can you take it? No takers? Time. No takers. All right. He made $10. No, he didn't. He made $20 profit. Two separate transactions. All right. I have a 25 point bonus coming up, and here's a toss up. For 10 points, John Adams is to John Quincy Adams as Lancelot. Is to who? Warner Hurwitz. Galahad. Galahad, right. Father, <laughs> 25 point bonus, Barnard. Work as a team. Quickly, this is a quick one. Tell us what the following congressional pacts and acts dealt with the Clayton Act, 1914. Trust. Right, Trust. antitrust. The Kellogg Breon Pact. The, the Cowboying War. The right, Trump. for five points. The Holy Smoot Act. Tariffs. Protective Tariffs, 1930, five points. The Tidings McDuffie Act. Offshore oil. Offshore oil. No, Tidings Talk gave Philippine Islands independence. No point. The Norris LaGuardia Act. No, time is called Labor laws are limited granting of injunctions against labor. I have a 20 point bonus in the offing. Here's your toss up. I'm going to name four kings King James, King Stephen, King Andrew, and King Charles. Now for 10 points. Which of these men has never been a king of England? Southern Cal Arkin. King Andrew is Andrew Jackson, one of our presidents. Right. You got the right answer. King Andrew there was never a King Andrew in England. You got a 20-point bonus, Southern Cal. Here you go. This man's wife was called Lemonade Lucy. He became 19th president of the United States by one electoral vote. Though his opponent pulled a larger popular vote for 20.2 was. This is a Tilden Hayes controversy. It would be it would be uh, Hayes, and wouldn't it? Rutherford. Hayes. Hayes. Rutherford B. Hayes. That's yes. right, for 20 points. Okay. Now I have another 20 points. Another 20 points here. Here you go with a toss up for 10 points. A Samuel Johnson dictionary is tossed out of the window of a coach in the first chapter of what English novel? Southern Cal Moritz. Vanity Fair. Right, for 10 points. Here's your bonus question. 20 points. For 20 points, what English poet claimed? Tis better to have loved than lost oh. than never to have loved at all. Name some English poets. <laughs> Byron, Byron, Byron Shelley. What is it? What is it? Who's the poet? Byron Shelley. Who? Byron? Byron. No. Tennyson. In memoriam. Tennyson. I have a 20 point bonus coming up. Here's your toss up. For 10 points, who purchased what from whom 92 years ago tomorrow? Years ago tomorrow. Southern Cal Arkin. The dads didn't purchase. I think that we purchased a certain piece of land from Mexico. No, I'm sorry. Can you take it, Barnard? <coughs> Barnard, money. No. I asked for three things. You gave me one thing. The United States purchased Alaska from Russia. Okay, I still have a 20-point bonus in the offing. Here's your toss-up. A kind of apple and a kind of coat have a name pronounced the same but spelled different. Southern Cal Waterman. Macintosh. Right, for 10 points. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The time's up. The game's over. We're going to validate the final score and award our scholarship grants. And in the meantime, here's a word from General Electric. Something new has been added. The General Electric portable mixer now has a drink mixer for delicious shakes and juice drinks in quicker than a shake. 
an extra attachment at no extra cost. This GE portable mixer weighs less than three pounds, yet it's powerful enough to blend the heaviest batter. Also mixes sauces at the range. It has low speed for cookie dough, medium speed for beating frostings, and high speed for whipping egg whites. And look, this handy push button releases the beaters at a touch. And no dangling cord. You can remove the cord so it stores neatly on the wall. Comes in four decorator colors. See it at your GE dealers. Does any mixing job anywhere. It's official. The final score today is Barnard, 195, University of Southern California, 65. Barnard is the winner. <laughs> for the University of Southern California, for GE's $500 grant, and for carrying home the honors today, Barnard will receive a $1,500 scholarship grant from the General Electric Company. General Electric has asked me to take a moment right now to thank you for the wonderful letters we've received from colleges and universities and particularly from you loyal fans. Many of you have said that uh, although our game is exciting, perhaps of even greater importance is the fact that this program somehow seems to serve as an incentive for young people to approach their schoolwork with more vigor and enthusiasm. And with that in mind, they've asked me to address this message to you high school students, particularly you juniors and seniors. Think about this, will you? You will receive out of your schoolwork benefits in direct relationship, in direct ratio to the effort you put into your schoolwork. So as you approach these final weeks of this very important semester, please remember this, will you? When you're in school, you are truly in business for yourself. Think about it, will you? Don Morrow will be back in just a moment to tell you about our next game two weeks from today. Time was when waking up was misery. If you jumped out of bed, you were grouchy all day. If you went back to sleep, you overslept and... <coughs> late for work again. Until General Electric Telecron introduced the snooze alarm clock. The electric clock that wakes you, lets you snooze about ten minutes, then wakes you again. Only General Electric Telecron snooze alarm clocks let you go back to sleep and still wake you for sure. Today, you've witnessed the General Electric College Bowl competition between Barnard College and the University of Southern California. Two weeks from today, we'll be back on campus in New York City, where winning Barnard will defend its title against a challenging team from the University of Minnesota of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in the weeks to come, we're going to have college, we're going to have teams here from Goucher, Davidson, and many other fine schools, and we hope you'll be with us. So long, everybody. <laughs> This is Don Morrow inviting you to join us again two weeks from today for another undergraduate contest on the GE College Bowl. Brought to you at this time by the General Electric Company, where progress is our most important product. novel begins in translation with these words. All happy families resemble one another. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Right. I have a 30-pointer. A 30-pointer is coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, what legal document concludes with these words? In witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names, at Cape Cod, the 11th of November. Southern Cal Waterman. 
The Mayflower Compact. Right, for ten points. <laughs> Got a 30-point bonus. A 30-point bonus. Ten points apiece. Tell us, what fictional Englishman sailed on the Patna? Fictional English. Fictional English. Crusoe, perhaps? Gulliver. The Patna. Gulliver. Gulliver? Gulliver? No. Lord Jim in Conrad's novel. What real life... You can still make 20 points on this. What real life Englishman was a passenger on the HMS Beagle? Oh, oh this was a researcher of some sort. Darwin. Uh, Darwin. That's right. Darwin. The scientist Darwin. What ill-fated ship did Captain Calamai command? Uh, the Panic? No. The Andrea Dorian. The Andrea Dorian. Mm -hmm. I have a 25-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points. Horrid Danis, mentioned in a popular song by Nelson and Rollins. Zilville Lagus, Florid Danis. The common name for the mammal. You don't know it? Rabbit? What? The Easter Rabbit? Bunny? No. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Cottontail is what I was thinking. No points. And I got to sing. All right, here we go. For ten points, what rabbit was created by a woman named Mary Chase? Oh, Harvey. Harvey. That's right for ten points. Okay. I have a 30-point musical bonus. A 30-point musical bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For ten points, if you've got a good whip of C A. CL3, would you be most apt to make a date with a beauty queen, take a nap, or run to the nearest point of Hurwitz? You would take a nap because that's ether. That's what? Oh, it's chloroform, but take a nap is the answer. I was seeking. I didn't have to. <laughs> All, right. All right, now, this is our musical bonus today. You ready? You'd probably be able to recognize the dance form indicated by the music of the waltz or the cha-cha-cha. But for ten points apiece, you are now to identify the dance form. I want the dance form represented in each of these classical compositions. First, what is the dance form? Listen. Polonaise. Polonaise. That's right, for ten points. You are all going for the same thing. Military irregular sent by the English to suppress the agitation for the independence, right, in Ireland. All right, ten points. Okay, who were the blues and greens? Sounds like a spring color combination. <laughs> well, that's a good color combination. <laughs> but this is not what I mean. Who were they? A, well, a French revolutionary movement. No, that's a good guess. But they were political factions in 6th century Byzantine Empire. <laughs> well, I thought everybody knew that. All right, here we go. I have a 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, who is the only woman who has ever won two... Nobel Prizes. <coughs> Barnard Hurwitz. Marie Curie. Marie Curie is right for 10 points. <laughs> All right, Barnard. Work as a team. It's a 20-point bonus question on nursery rhyme characters who were amateur fishermen. 10 points for each correct answer. Which character tried to catch a whale in his mother's pail? Simple Simon. Simple Simon. Simple Simon, 10 points. Do you know the verse? Simple Simon, Simon went, went a fishing, fishing for to catch, catch a whale. whale. But the oh. only fish that were there were in his mother's pail. Well, that's fair enough. All right. All right. Which one caught fishes in other men's ditches? Come, come, come. Little Tommy Tittlemouse oh. lived in a little house. He got a 20-point bonus here. Here's, here's another toss-up. For 10 points, why is it impossible for a dum-dum ever to have hit a dodo? <laughs> Barnard, Rennie. Because a dum-dum is a bullet, and a dodo is extinct right now, and therefore the dum-dum would have come after the dodo. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, work as a team now. Work as a team. For 20 points, what Russian novel begins in translation with these words? All happy families resemble one another. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. Right. I have a 30-pointer. A 30-pointer is coming up. Here's your toss-up. For 10 points, what legal document concludes with these words? In witness whereof we have hereunto subscribed our names at Cape Cod, the 11th of November. Southern Cal Waterman. The Mayflower Compact. Right. For 10 points. 
point bonus. A 30 point bonus. 10 points apiece. Tell us, what fictional Englishman sailed on the Patna? Fictional English. Fictional English. Crusoe, perhaps? Gulliver. The Patna. Gulliver. Gulliver? Gulliver? No. Lord Jim in Conrad's novel. What real life... You can still make 20 points on this. What real life Englishman was a passenger on the HMS Beagle? Oh, this was a resort. You could have done the whole poem, huh? <laughs> All right, that's plenty. That's 30 points you earned there. I have another 30-pointer coming up. Here's your toss-up. You ready for 10 points? In what book of the Bible would you find this passage? And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye... Barnard White. Matthew. Matthew. That is right for 10 points. <laughs> All right, here's a 30-point bonus, Barnard. Work as a team on this. The bonus question, uh, worth 30 points, as I say, for 10 points. What fictional lagomorph lost a pair of white kid gloves? The, the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. 10 points. For 10 points, what is the common name of the mammal, Silville Lagus Foridanus, mentioned in a popular song by Nelson and Rollins? Silville Lagus Floridanus. The common name for the mammal. You don't know it? Rabbit. What? The Easter Rabbit. Bunny. No. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Cottontail is what I was thinking. No points. And I got to sing. All right, here we go. For ten points, what rabbit was created by a woman named Mary Chase? Oh, Harvey. Harvey. That's right for ten points. Okay. I have a 30-point musical bonus. A 30-point musical bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. For ten points, if you've got a good whip, of C. Now, talking to these girls from uh, Barnard, I want to find out first about uh, your reception after you returned from Notre Dame, the Conquering Heroes. How, what kind of reception did you have, Ellen? Oh, it was really wonderful. A whole lot of the girls came out to meet us, and the Columbia Band came out, and Mrs. McIntosh, president. Uh -huh. What about the Columbia boys? Oh, they were very happy for us, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Phyllis? They want to know what you're going to do when you graduate from college. Well, my plans include going to medical school, and I hope to have a career in medical research. And it'll be an exciting one, I'll bet you. I hope so. What are your plans, Cherry? I, I want to go into college teaching, and of course, that involves graduate school first. I'm very excited because I was accepted at Columbia this week, so that's where I'm going. On a fellowship? Yes. Very good. Susan. <laughs> Susan, what are your plans? Uh, well, I hope to go into the field of applied anthropology. Applied anthropology. And that's the whistle that starts our second half with the score, University of Southern California, zero, Barnard College, 140. We're beginning our second half, and this word of caution, teams. The next time that whistle blows, it's the final whistle. If it blows while I'm in the process of asking a question, I stop, and that's it. If it blows while you're in the process of answering a question, you may complete the answer to that one question only. I have a 20-point bonus in the offing. Here's your toss-up. A verse by James Ball Naylor goes, King David and King Solomon led merry, merry lives with many, many lady friends and many, many wives. Now, for ten points, how many wives? Again, only General Electric Telecron snooze alarm clocks let you go back to sleep and still wake you for sure. Today, you've witnessed the General Electric College Bowl competition between Barnard College and the University of Southern California. Two weeks from today, we'll be back on campus in New York City where winning Barnard will defend its title against a challenging team from the University of Minnesota of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in the weeks to come, we're going to have colleagues, we're going to have teams here from Goucher, Davidson, and many other fine schools, and we hope you'll be with us. So long, everybody. This is Don Morrow inviting you to join us again two weeks from today for another undergraduate contest on the GE College Bowl. Brought to you at this time by the General Electric Company, where progress is our most important product. Oh, you hate yourself. What is that dance for?
Couldn't you dance to that? <laughs> no takers? That's the polka from Shostakovich's Age of Gold. The polka. All right. I have a 30-point bonus coming up. Don, what's the score now? Barnard, 90. Southern Cal, 0. All right. This is a visual toss-up. It's a visual toss-up to test your powers as association, so watch very carefully. White. Of Shoes and Ships and Filling Racks of Cabbages and Kings, it's The Walrus and, and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll. From well, Alice in Wonderland. you're right, and I'm glad you got it, but you know what you dipped me out of? The cabbage? You dipped me out of picking up. Look what I had to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I know this doesn't have to ship. I was going to ask, now for ten points, quote the lines of verse in which all of the objects I've just shown you are mentioned, and of course the answer is Of Shoes and Ships. Well, I got I the cabbages. I was waiting for the cabbages. You were? Well, that's why I was holding them. All right. Here's your 30-point bonus, Barnard. In history, certain political and military factions have been associated with colors. For 10 points apiece, you were to tell us, who were the Red Rose and the White Rose? La Lancaster and York. That's 10 points. 